Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Dividing Fractions with Models, uh, Part 1. So another title would be Understanding What Fraction Division Really Means, right? A lot of students can calculate the answer when we're dividing fractions, but really don't remember or understand what it actually means to divide fractions. So for instance, our first problem will be the following. Let's say we take the fraction 1 half and we want to divide that fraction by another fraction, which is 1 fourth. What would this be actually equal to? So it's helpful to remember what, fractions, uh, what fraction division and what division in general really means. What it means is we take the fraction 1 half and we want to see how many times can this fraction, or whatever it is, fit inside of the 1 half. Before we tackle this problem, let's go back and revision and revise or remember what division actually means in general. Let's take the simpler problem, 6, and let's divide it by 2. Now you all know 6 divided by 2 is 3, right? Because 3 times 2 is 6. But let's try to remember what does it mean to actually divide these numbers. The 6 we're going to represent by these little circles. There's 1, 2, 3, here's 4, here's 5, here's 6 of them. And we're going to divide it by 2. So 1, and I can kind of put a little, little division symbol here. 6 divided by 2, right? What does it actually mean to take and divide these here? There's a couple of ways to think about it, but one way is to say, well, how many times can this fit inside of the 6 that we are given? We're dividing by 2, so it can fit one time here, and then another time here, and then a third time here. So we say that 6 divided by 2 is 3. So it's helpful in division problems to think of it as we're starting with an amount, and we're dividing by another amount. How many times can that second thing fit in? So we're going to be taking one half and dividing by one fourth and doing the same thing. We just need to represent one half and one fourth to figure out the answer. So let's go over here and do that. We have the same problem, one half divided by one fourth. When we represent one half, what do we do? We have a whole, in this case it's like a candy bar, a whole candy bar, think of it. But one half is really only this amount. And one fourth was what we're dividing by. If we take the same size candy bar and cut it into four equal pieces and only have one fourth, then we have this guy right here. So the first amount, the one half, is only this amount right here. And then the second amount, the one fourth, is the amount here. We really want to see how many times can this fit into there. And so we've redrawn it here in the second drawing down below. So here you can see we've redrawn it as we have before. The one half is here and the one fourth is here, but we can now see that two of them exactly fit inside, whereas before we have the one half and the one fourth and just kind of showing you the fractions. Here down below you can see that one of them fit in there and then the second one fourth is exactly the correct size to fit another, another time. So how many times can this one fourth fit in there? It can fit exactly two times. So we say the fraction one half divided by one fourth is exactly equal to two because the fraction one fourth fits into this fraction one half two whole times. And that is basically the concept of fraction division. It's the same thing as regular division that we already understand and, and know and love, but uh, applied to fractions. So let's take another example. What about the fraction two thirds and divided by one sixth? We want to see how many times can this fraction fit inside of this one. So one third would be taking a candy bar into three equal pieces and only having one of them. And one sixth would be taking a candy bar and cutting it into six, one, two, three, four, five, six pieces, and only having one of them. How many times can it fit into the one third? Uh, well, actually, this is just one third uh, in my drawing here, but in our original fraction, really, we're taking two thirds and dividing by one sixth. So if this is one third, then this must be two thirds right here. And then we're dividing by 1 6, which is down below. So how many times can 1 6 fit into 2 thirds? Well, it can fit one time, two times, three times, four times. So this is a third, this is another third for 2 thirds. And dividing by 1 6 means it goes exactly four times. Exactly four times. And that's the final answer. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. Let's say we have the fraction one fifth, and we're going to divide it by one tenth. So here we have the fraction one fifth because we cut the candy bar into five pieces and only have one of them. Here we cut the candy bar into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces and only have one of them. How many times can this fit in there? Well, we have the one fifth, we have the one tenth, and it can fit two whole times. So one fifth divided by one tenth means it goes two whole times. 
All right, for our next problem, what about the fraction 1 half divided by 1 eighth? Well, 1 half is represented by this half of the candy bar, and then 1 eighth is cutting it into eight equal pieces and only having one of them. How many times can this fit into the 1 half? So if we have the 1 half here, it'll fit one time, two times, three times, four times exactly. So when we divide these, we get an answer of four, and that is the final answer. All right, now here's our very last problem. It is taking the fraction 1 third and dividing it by 1 9. One third is taking candy bar, cutting it into three pieces, only having one of them. One ninth is cutting it into nine pieces, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and only having one of them. How many times can it go in? I think you can see that into one third, one ninth can fit one, two, three times exactly. So the fractional answer is three, three times exactly. All right, now in all of these problems, the answers were whole numbers. We took and divided these fractions, we got a whole number of three. We took and divided these fractions, got a whole number of four. In all of the other uh, examples uh, earlier in the lesson, they also divided a whole number of times. Much like when you divide regular numbers, six divided by three is two, right? Six divided by two is three. But if you take six divided by five, it doesn't divide evenly. There's a fractional answer. Same thing is true of fractions. I've constructed these to all divide a whole number of times, but if I change the problem a little bit, it won't go in a whole number of times. They'll have a fractional leftover. If I change this uh, fraction, instead of 1 ninth, make it 1 eighth or 1 seventh or 1 sixth, I'm gonna change the width of the fraction. I'm gonna change the size of it. And then it might go in and there might be a little bit of spillage left over or it might not go in an exact number of times. So in general, when we divide fractions, we will not get answers that are whole numbers because in this case, it lines up exactly. But if I divide by a different size fraction, we might have a little bit of leftover extra and it won't divide a whole number of times. And so you may have a fractional answer. I just want you to keep that in mind. I'd like you to go through all of these, try to understand the main concept behind fraction division. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue building your skills with visualizing how to divide fractions.